In recent months since the COVID-19 pandemic began, I have been noticing an interesting phenomenon. In the written communications I have been receiving on news reports and in everyday conversation, people are prefacing or embedding in their messages and conversation unique descriptions of the times we are living in. As if in our communal bewilderment, we need to give witness and voice to our inner and outer experiences to make some kind of sense or just circle around what is going on by labeling or describing or classifying this moment of our personal and collective lives, the spirit of the times, so to speak. So let me give you some examples of the phrases and adjectives I've seen describing these past months. In this time of uncertainty, in these most trying of times, in this time of great turning, these most tender and sensitive times, most unique time in history, this moment we are living through, times of enormous upheaval and change, tumultuous time of navigating change, time of uncertainty and opportunity, time of creative incubation. In this extraordinary and uncertain period, times of deep change, this perilous moment, threshold times. And of course, the times or these times or this moment have also been described as dire, unprecedented, hard, challenging, scary, chaotic, crazy, difficult, unusual, tough, stressful, disorienting, unsettled, surreal. But the two words that I have noticed most often are uncertain and change. And with the recent social unrest, I began to see different, more urgent descriptors of this time. The time is now. There is no more time. A time of rapid and overdue change. It's right. It's time. These are burning times. We cannot continue doing business as usual during these times. What is this hour asking of us? We have entered a Kairos moment, a time beset with both danger and opportunity, writes Michael Mead. And I am sure with a different urgency than we have felt in the past, we have all heard the phrase, now more than ever is the time to come together, to unite, to act. And I'm sure there are those who are wondering or maybe even convinced that we are living in the end times so much chaos, disruption, and loss in such a short period of time. And you really don't want to look at the doomsday clock put out by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists at 100 seconds to midnight. It's all too terrifying. I think we all might be collectively holding our breath in anticipation and anxiety, wondering what will happen next what the next moment in time will bring. I've heard so many say that they are just trying to hold on until 2021. And who could have imagined these past six months when I was with you for the New Year's service? Time has certainly taken on a different quality in recent months, and we may have gained some new perspective, maybe developed a new relationship to, or experience of time. The way we spend it, who we spend it with, what we spend it doing, the way we waste it, the way we value it, the way we keep track or lose track of it, the way we take it for granted, the way we manage it or not. I read a directive that suggests we honor the minutes of our life as the most valuable substance we possess. It's interesting how we talk about and perceive time as if it is tangible, as if it is an omnipresent force, resource, asset, and gift with a will of its own. 
but yet I believe that time can be an oppressive, even punishing force in our lives. Time flies. Time got, goes by too slowly. We are pressed for time. We are told to use it wisely, to make time for what is important and what we want to happen. We have time to kill. Time runs out. Things happen just in the nick of time, by divine timing, in God's time. Women have biological clocks that tick tock away. Time waits for no one. And how much will we give just to have one more second with one we love? Times, time seems to be a cruel taskmaster, causing much stress and distress in trivial and significant ways. Even though we know that time is a given, a force of nature, a natural law, out of our mortal manipulative control. Time marches on, they say, and I can't help but think of military order and precision pushing us through our lives. We experience time as both finite and eternal. We know that our lives are time bound from the moment of our birth to the moment of our death, but yet we are also connected to and a part of an eternal timeless source that stretches back to the past and on to the future. I recently read a Christian prayer addressed to the Lord of time and eternity, which in the context was a deeply felt prayer of gratitude to God for a particular blessing in life. On one hand, this is a lovely salutation to the Lord of time and eternity, but I also thought it was rather curious, as if it is necessary to pray to a supreme being even superior to and in control of mysterious, unfathomable phenomenon such as time and eternity. We know that we exist here in this present moment, this here and now, yet we are also connected to, subject to, and an integral part of what has been and what is yet to come. If you stop to think about it, and I think we all may have lately, that we know deep in our bones that this is a choice point for humanity, a great turning, time to look to the atrocities and mistakes of the past and seek justice to the degree possible, time to envision a new compassionate egalitarian future, a new reverence for all life. The decisions and actions we take now in this moment of time will be the foundation on which the future is built. We all may know the opening lines of Charles Dickens' novel, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredible incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. It seems that no matter the times we live in, we always live in this dichotomy. The best of times, the worst of times. Who amongst us has never wondered what it would be like to time travel? to go back in time to visit a certain historical period, or go to a time in the future to see what is going to happen, what it is going to be like, to bring back warning or reassurance. Perhaps we hold idealistic ideas of what these times were like in the past and will be like in the future. I think that there would be positives and negatives to any era, past or future. This idea of time travel, which I think is also related to deeper wonderings about more immortality, captures the imagination and so many theories, books, and movies have been made about it. It's a fun fantasy to explore, a distraction from the sometimes saneness and drudgery of our everyday lives. But we are mere mortals having to live our lives in real time 
moment after moment, day after day, year after year, coping with our own feelings of loss, trauma, and regret from the past, as well as worry and anxiety, anticipation, and excitement about what will come to pass in the future. And ultimately, we all must decide for ourselves how it is we want to spend our time and our own soul's potential. Do we pursue instant gratification, living in the moment because you only live once and you fear missing out? Or do we pursue long-term goals and objectives with discipline and self-sacrifice so that we can meet our deeper need for purpose, meaning, and service to the collective? As with everything, there is a balance that we need to strive for, both living in and cherishing the moment, as well as building the foundation for our future. And perhaps these quarantine times and disrupted patterns of living have given us some spaciousness and urgency for a thoughtful self-reflection. This quote describes a deep soul longing of author Greg Braden and captures the relationship that I personally am striving to cultivate with time. He writes, I want to live simply. I want to sit by the window when it rains and read books I'll never be tested on. I want to paint because I want to, not because I've got something to prove. I want to listen to my body, fall asleep when the moon is high, and wake up slowly with no place to rush off to. I want not to be governed by money or clocks or any of the artificial restraints that humanity imposes on itself. I just want to be boundless and infinite. I want this for everyone, to be untethered to time, to live deeply, spaciously, soulfully, consciously, all of the time. This is the directive of our souls, I believe, if we can only listen. And we may have already gotten a glimpse of what this could be like while we were on stay or safer at home orders. We know this feeling though, this time out of time, infinite feeling. I know we have all had these kinds of truly in the moment experiences when everything feels spacious and we follow our own internal rhythms and not a self-imposed or enforced schedule when we are slave to a clock. We know the difference in a felt sense between chronos time, chronological, and kairos time, sacred time, a time of interiority and deep connection to self and the universe, when we can just be or have sacred experiences of awe, beauty, majesty, and mystery, holy, numinous experiences, times of flow. While some of us may wish to be free from the constraints of time, there are others who are held and comforted in routine and observance of the cycles of the days, weeks, months. So many faith traditions, including Unitarian Universalism, have structures of daily prayer, weekly observances, a liturgical year, filled with the honoring of earth cycles, historical events, the lives of revered prophets, and cherished cultural traditions. We continue to observe those spiritual teachings handed down generation after generation that have stood the test of time, that have survived from ancient times into modernity, because they contain the wisdom that help us grow into spiritual maturity the wisdom that comes in time, over time, with time, as we live through and with the spirit of our times. I am also keenly aware that time is a privilege and a responsibility. I am thinking of those in grief who would give anything to have more time with their loved ones to be able to go back in time to make interventions to prevent illness and death, to cure, to heal, 
to change the circumstances that caused injury. I am thinking of those who have to work constantly to provide the basic necessities for their families and cannot spend as much time with them to meet their emotional needs. I am thinking of those whose time and potential here on this earth are denied or cut short because of structures of oppression and hatred. I'm thinking of first responders and medical caregivers who do not have the privilege of time to make well-informed life and death decisions. I'm thinking of those whose lives come to an end without the privilege of time to say goodbye, to get their affairs in order, to make amends, to find forgiveness and peace. We need to be reminded again and again to use our time for the good, to be conscious and aware of the possibilities and potential of each moment. And so I close with this final blessing. No matter how uncertain the tar, may you have the heart and the courage to navigate to all that is good, to all that is holy, and use your time as a force for good. And may you always be led by grace. Blessed be.